The Cancer Genome Atlas is undertaking as its first major project uh, brain, brain tumors, especially uh, glioblastoma. Um, looking back over the last decade, um, the NCI and the NHGRI, uh, the National Institute of Health, have defined sort of the fabric of the human genome with, through the Human Genome Project. And I like to think of this as the sort of materials list for our, for our bodies and our genomes. So we have the we've had the materials for about a decade. What the Cancer Genome Atlas has, has started to do over the last three years is, is then define the parts list. And so we've had a couple of big reports in terms of the, the, the parts of cancers and, and the pieces that might be broken. What we've done in, in this most recent work is to start to put those parts together um, to form different types of tumors. So these parts don't fit together randomly. Um, and, uh, but we've never had the tools to integrate the parts and figure out how they fit together. That's what we've done uh, successfully, really for, I think, the first time in glioblastoma using all of the data that uh, the Cancer Genome Atlas has, and it has provided. Um, we've integrated these parts and seen that there are different types of tumors that, that are behaving in a coordinated way and that have coordinated broken pieces. Glioblastoma is the most common malignant glioma in adults. It's um, it's also one of the most feared tumors in all of cancer. Um, it's a disease which is nearly uniformly fatal in, a, in about a year for most patients. Um, and although we do have some treatments, surgery and radiation, for most uh, patients those treatments are just for, for palliation. Um, and although they may prolong life by a period of months, we really don't have effective long-term therapies or cures for glioblastoma. What we have been able to show very convincingly, I think, in this, in this work is that there are, are at least four types of glioblastomas. Um, while there might be more, and you know, we could look at this differently and uncover additional um, uh, insights, for the moment we've been able to find four types um, uh, with high confidence and not more than four types. What we've seen in, in the current work, and very clearly, uh, is that these, these events happen in a coordinated fashion. And the more we understand the coordination of these tumors, the more we can interrupt it. And what's, what's really elegant about the, the initial finding is that we already have um, therapies targeting several of the pathways that we're, that we're showing to be um, uh, broken or disrupted. And in fact, I think the therapeutic strategies are actually relatively near term using uh, drugs and agents and strategies that are already available. These findings are really very compelling because they, in, in, in the near term, because um, you know, I, I think it would be premature to walk into the clinic today and, and make specific recommendations based on our study. However, I think it would be completely appropriate today to design phase two tr clinical trials and other similar treatment strategies, including other retrospective looks at trials that have already been completed um, that, are, that are right in line with the alterations that we found. So, you know, on, on average, it takes us about um, a year and a half to get a clinical trial open. For many of our trials, it takes us about a year and a half to complete them. So, you know, over about three years, I think we could see the first results of phase two clinical trials designed from these data. And in, and in um, clinical research and clinical terms, that is really fast turnaround. And, and I think the results are so compelling that we're quite likely to see these clinical trials um, targeting in a very specific way the pathways that, that we've highlighted in, in this paper.